Their friends and guests are being wined and dined in a manner that, of course, befits champions. Must be said at this stage that, uh, well, the Burlington Hotel has really picked the winners this year. Just a fortnight ago, of course, you'll remember, we were here for the victory celebrations with the Tipperary Hurling team. Well, you know, it's been a long, long day for the down players, but I'm delighted to say there's a bit of talk left in a few of them yet, as Jerk Canning is about to find out. You're absolutely right, Michael. Uh, Paddy O'Rourke beside me said, will you, for goodness sake, be quick. We're just about to go into the roast beef. <laughs> Paddy, it was a great day for down football. It's been an excellent day. I am absolutely delighted. I'm only now beginning to believe that we really have won it, and I probably won't believe it properly until tomorrow when we go back across the border and go through the army jackpot and, and, and see all the, the down fans. <laughs> Well, you deserve to get some welcome after that performance. Were you beginning to worry when me were coming ever so close? Uh, I never really worried that much. You know, I always felt we had enough in reserve. I felt we were going to win it. I felt before the match we were going to win it, and, and I didn't change that the whole way through. OK, Meath have made some you know, brilliant comebacks, and uh, you do get a bit anxious, but I always felt we were going to get the scores to win the game. It's some down team. There's great character in the team. You've prepared well. Yes, they've prepared very well, and, and credit must go to all the boys. For it. They've put in a lot of hard work, and we've been doing uh, probably five out of seven nights of training, and uh, it's been a, a big commitment, but when you get your medal at the end of it, it makes it all worthwhile. Hard to believe that you're one county that has never lost an All-Ireland final. Yeah, well, that's a good record to have, and, and that put a wee bit of pressure on us coming in today because we had, we had heard that at home for the past four weeks. Uh, but the players live with that, and uh, hopefully we can continue to win All-Ireland titles. Trying to retain it, of course, in Ulster next year will be rather difficult because, as you know very well, since the mid-70s, no county has managed to retain the Ulster title. Yes, that's very much in our, in our minds. We're not going to worry about it tonight, man, or for the rest of the week, but I'm sure people sitting back in our mall are saying we're going to get them boys in the athletic grounds. Well done to Paddy O'Rourke. OK, thank you. Well done. Congratulations to you. OK, next I'd like you to meet uh, Greg Blaney. Greg, congratulations to you. They say that marriage has improved your game considerably. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion. Well, I did get married this year, and I suppose it hasn't done me any harm. Um, <laughs> we didn't win much in the last ten years, and this year I got married in July and won the Ulster title and won the All-Ireland today, so I'm absolutely delighted. Of course, you've been ever on the go with uh, hurling as well. Yes, well, uh, this last few years I've, I've been involved at County Eleven, both football and hurling, and... Uh, it can make for a long year, but when you, when you achieve success like we achieved today, it's, it's all worth it. What ran through your mind when you ran out in the field today and you got that marvellous welcome? Well, what ran through my mind was that um, I suppose if, if you can't play football on an occasion like today, on a pitch like today, you can't play football anywhere. And we were, well, we were uptight and nervous, OK? We, we were very determined to go out and play football and play to the best of our ability. You had a terrific game involved in most of the down attacks. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it was a wee bit slow settling now. It was about 10 or 15 minutes before I got my hands on the ball, but as the game went on, I got into it better and things, things ran relatively well for me. They certainly did. Well done to Greg Blaney. Well done, Greg. Right, Pete McGrath. Well, what can we say, Pete? Uh, you took over the team. They say nobody else wanted the job. You've achieved what you set out to achieve. Yes, <clears throat> they're actually looking for a very young manager when they actually advertised the post. No one else knew that. And, uh, well, they got a young fella. They did indeed, and maybe not so young now, but uh, there, were, there were problems at the time. But I had looked after minor teams for a number of years, and I was keenly aware of the ability within the county. And I was lucky enough to get two extremely sound men as my assistants, John Murphy and Barney Trainer. And... Two other, two other very reliable men, Martin Simons and Gabriel Truman. And backing the whole lot up, I've got a personal assistant at home, my mother, who at this point in time uh, must be sick and tired of looking at the telephone because she's been on it more often than I have. So I had a very, very good backup team, and uh, thank God everything has gone well. Well done. It is, it is suggested. There is just the hint of a rumour that at one stage before the Armagh match, you were thinking that, well... It might be resignation time very shortly. Uh, I think that is a little bit like the uh, rumour of Mark Twain's death. Uh, it was grossly uh, over-exaggerated. Uh, our attitude this year was to take each game on its merits. And I think, at the end of the day, the panel of players this year decided that they had been fooling around for long enough and it was time to go down to some serious work and it was time that they showed the rest of the province and the rest of the country that they could play football and that is what they did. 
Terrific. Well done, Pete. Congratulations. Liam Austin. Hi, Liam. Yes, sir. Well, Liam, you, you've been on the go for a fair few years at this stage, one of the senior men of this team. Did you ever believe this day would come about? Uh, to be quite honest with you, I didn't. Uh, we've had some very, very good days, but geez, we had a lot, a lot of bad ones. And I must admit, you know, the clock for their time was running out on me. And uh, I'm just so thrilled. And for the older members of the team, like Ambrose and myself, it's a great, great day. <laughs> You know, you know, trying to live up to the great teams of the 60s, that can't have been easy. No, and uh, hopefully today we've made our own little bit of history and, uh, you know, we work from there. The 60s was a time that was very, very successful for, for County Down and hopefully the 90s will be even as much successful. You're going to enjoy your success, but I'm sure you must have a, a feeling about Meath as well, having lost at the end of 10 games. I have, and I've also a very... Uh, personal feelings about me because there's some very good sportsmen among them and uh, Jerry McEntee and, and Colin Work and those boys, you know, they've been around a lot and uh, I, th I thought today that they showed true sportsmanship and uh, it's a credit to them. Liam Austin and Down, well done to you all. There we go. Michael. Let's go back to uh, Michael and uh, we'll have the man of the match for you shortly. Yes, well, it'll give you an idea of the size of a man that Liam Austin is, that Jerk Canning himself is no small man. Well, now, there is one other mystery out of this year's football and hurling championship still to be resolved. Two weeks ago, here in the Burlington Hotel, Pat Fox stepped up to receive the Telecom Aaron Man of the Match Award. Who will it be from this year's football final? Well, I'm sure that you have your own ideas at home, but one man who knows for definite is Jack O'Shea, and he's with Jerk Canning now. Yes, indeed. Jack is going to nominate our man of the match very shortly, but I would like to welcome Jim Joyce, Executive Director of Telecom Aaron, who will make the presentation. Jim, you're very welcome indeed. Now, Jack, I should tell everybody here that since six o'clock, Jack has been saying to me, you know, Ger, Kerry wasn't bad after all. You enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the game, Joe. And, uh, I think tonight we're all talking about Donald, but I think we must give a bit of credit to Meath. I think Meath today showed us the tremendous team that they were all year. And uh, like, I don't think there's any other team in the country would have come back from where they were today. And uh, I would like to give them credit as well tonight. OK, Jack, the big moment has arrived. You nominate your Telecom Air and Man of the Match for the All-Ireland Football Final. Yeah, it was a difficult enough uh, decision. I thought Jerry McEntee for Meath had a great game throughout the game. I thought Greg Blaney for Down, Eamon Burns for Down had a great game. But there's one man who was never in time, because I actually had the room with him for a month in Australia <laughs> last year, and he was never in time. That's James McCarthy. Well done, James. Well done. Now... Jim Joyce to make the presentation to James McCartan. Jim. Well, I'm sure James would agree that there were many men of the match on the field today. We saw two great teams who were a credit to Gaelic football, and it's a very great pleasure for Telecom Earn to be associated with this award. There's a watch as well, James. You'll never be late again. <laughs> James. Uh, Jack was saying during the commentary today, he's seen everything now. He saw you kick a point with the, the wrong foot. <laughs> Once I knew that point went over the bar, I knew there was only one way for us today, and that was to win. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, overwhelmed at the minute. It hasn't really sunk in, like Paddy says. But uh, we've all, all year to let it sink in, and we intend to enjoy ourselves, and it'll be great going home tomorrow evening. Somebody else who's here to share your big moment now is your, your dad. Let's have a word with him. <laughs> Hi, James. This is, uh, this is some young fellow you've, you've reared. Oh, yes, he's well fed. <laughs> You're obviously, right obviously very, very pleased. Oh, we're delighted that Sam will come back over the border again. It's, it's a great sell for Down, and a great, it's a great honour to Brolster, too. You were made, James, outsiders going into this by the, the bookies and the experts. I have to confess, I myself thought that Mead might win it, but you, you confounded us all. Well, that's understandable. Me, they've proved over the last few years what a great side they are. And I think again today, they proved what a great side they are. Any other team who would be 11 points down with 20 odd minutes left, I think would have packed their bags and went. But me, knuckled down and uh, showed what true champions they are. And it's, uh, I think it's more credit to the down team that we managed to beat such a great side. What's the future now for this down team, do you think? 
Well, most of us are very young, apart from Liam and Ambrose and these boys. But uh, <laughs> you'll not thank me for that. But anyway, well, I suppose the secret is to try and stick together, as me have showed over the last few years. And we're hoping that this isn't one off, and we'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, the telecom air in man of the match for the football final, James McCartan. <laughs> Yes, well, I have cameramen, photographers, all sides of me here, in front of me, behind me, getting pictures of our telecom air and man of the match winner from this year's football final, James McCartan. Now, Jack O'Shea mentioned that he had shared a room with James in Australia on the Compromise Rules trips. The connection between that and him winning the man of the match, well, I leave that for yourself to decide. 